yeah, so we've, um, I mean, I think we are seeing, uh, you know, consistent growth around the world. And as you, uh, as you mentioned, the, uh, the, the biggest um, uh, growth has been in, in the Asia Pacific markets. Um, you know, I think that's uh, certainly a testament to both having at, um, um, BlackBerry being uh, more recognized in the region. Uh, we're seeing great success in, uh, in different areas, uh, in Southeast Asia, um, in um, uh, India. And, um, you know, so BlackBerry is really starting to, to, to build out. Well, I think, um, you know, what's important with, with BlackBerry is understanding that, um, you know, we offer a whole host of different channels to market, and BlackBerry App World is one of those. Um, but we've seen an incredible amount of success with developers, both distributing directly, but even more so in partnering with the operators. And so, um, you know, I think when uh, developers are looking at BlackBerry, they need to understand that there is a broad range of opportunities um, to distribute your applications directly, to distribute through BlackBerry App World, um, to distribute with carrier partners locally um, and other resellers and, and integrators. Um, so I think, you know, the important thing is to really look at the market and, and where there are the opportunities. And, um, you know, also understanding, of course, globally what the market looks like, uh, because many of the applications they're building appeal to, to many different regions, not necessarily just local. We certainly see a, a huge amount of both, um, but this was a, an important year with the launch of BlackBerry App World, um, you know, to really help, um, you know, incent developers and, and to get them excited about the, um, the consumer application space, uh, knowing that we've got, you know, really great channels to market now. And so, um, you know, we certainly see, you know, just a great, great um, breadth of, of developers there. And, um, but, you know, I think music and gaming was very representative of some of the um, exciting areas, uh, music and entertainment, um, uh, games, uh, news and social networking um, have always been the, the, some of the top five categories so in BlackBerry. We knew app. people would buy Blackberries because we gave them the ability to email, which they're already doing, but we gave them that ability to do it anywhere. And um, in Asia Pacific, where social social networking is a popular uh, way to communicate with other people, by availing that on a smartphone, that is going to drive the adoption of smartphones because it gives that people the way to use what they're already using, but a much more rich, uh, much more real-time kind of way. So absolutely the ability to do these, uh, to integrate social networks into a smartphone technology will drive, ultimately drive the adoption of smartphone technology. And like Facebook, and my Facebook, all my friends have contact information in there. There's no reason why the contact information from my Facebook shouldn't show up in my contact list uh, or my address book application. So we allow that seamless integration between those two applications. Or if I get, um, you know, a notification from uh, a weather application that the weather's about to change or there's a storm, there's no reason I can't get an alert in the inbox of my email or, or my SMS or something like that. So. Um, and if there's if there's information in my if I get an email that has uh, um, uh, an address in it, there's no reason that that address can't immediately link into a map, right? And what that does is creates a squared effect over usability. So if I have 10 applications on my device that all talk to each other, that means I've actually got 100 different experiences that those 10 applications create. So. The ability for our for our for developers on our platform to interrelate their applications into other applications is a is a competitive differentiator um, because ultimately it makes that user experience for the end user much more rich. So yeah, we, we have all we actually do have all of these relationships already. Um, uh, but the nice thing now is now we can amp it up a little bit because we've got a platform that's more powerful. There's an interesting thing there that I learned just last night is there is other handsets that have OpenGL uh, implemented, but guess what? They don't have a chipset that require that, that supports the speed that the um, um, the frames have to, to change. So there's other platforms that have OpenGL implemented, um, but you, that, does, that still doesn't mean it's a good gaming platform. What we've done... Um, now we've got OpenGL implemented, and we've got a, in our products a, a minimum 512 megahertz processor with 258, 256 mem megabytes of memory. And now the game companies are like, we can just write games for all your for all your devices. Uh, so they're 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 even more excited uh, than the fact just that we're supporting OpenGL. They like the power of our platform, and they can do some really. Cool we wanted to get out to market as fast as possible. So we al we always knew we always knew different payment vehicles were were important. Uh, we started with PayPal because that was the fastest way we could get to market. Um, but we have learned that while 
we knew the other payment vehicles were important, they were actually even more important than we thought. Um, we've learned that some of the things that we did, we, we did anticipate that were right was uh, treating the app world uh, and knowing and, and giving it knowledge of applications. So it's not just a digital store, it's an application store. Meaning, if there's an upgrade, there should be knowledge that there's an upgrade and you shouldn't make people pay again for an upgrade. So, and you should tell them about it and, and, and don't make the developers build all that upgrade technology into the app itself, right? As soon as a developer upgrades a new version to App World, App World should say, oh, this is a new version. We should tell all the people who have it installed that there's a new version and they should download it. Um, so we've made it application aware. As opposed to just digital, which is just selling, you know, binaries and never and, and not understanding that there could be upgrades or anything like that. So specifically, I think um, the location-based API will be very interesting um, because it allows um, uh, even a uh, uh, company to, to to make use of API to actually locate the customer and actually um, build around the customer location to provide certain. Um, Need-based uh, application, application. Um, oh, it would be great if let's say there will be a conference that is held in Asia, so there will be more Asia developer that can attend, uh, and uh, they also um, can uh, touch on a more Asia pack specific issue. Uh, for example, uh, one of the key issues will be the language support for Mandarin, uh, or, or even a native uh, uh, Southeast Asian language like Thai or Bahasa. That will be interesting and also uh, we can also uh, touch on more cultural uh, implementation of a very uh, application for the application.